In this video, I'm going to show you how to derive the kinematics equation uh, when dealing with constant acceleration that will show you the position as a function of time. Okay, the position as a function of time here. So what we're going to do is we have to start with another basic equation here that we deal with, and that's going to be basically dealing with the equation of a velocity. Okay, so when we talk about velocity here, again, the velocity is going to be nothing more than the rate of change of the position function with respect to time. Okay, so what, what we need to do here is I want to solve for the position here, but I have some variables here in this equation that are not here, right? Okay, so I have a v here, but I have an acceleration here. So I have to do a little bit of changing this equation around, which I'm going to show you how to do right now. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these variables first. So I'm going to have here, I'm going to have v times dt is going to equal dx right here. But the problem is I don't have an acceleration yet. Now remember, we just did a derivation of this equation here, which was v equals vo plus at, okay? So just remember that last equation that we just did, right? So I'm going to use this equation, this function, to plug it into here, okay? So I'm going to expand this, this function out to include v initial and acceleration. So now I'm going to be getting closer to the equation that I want up here. So I'm going to basically have now v initial plus acceleration times time dt equals dx, right? Okay. So now I have something that's going to, it's resembling a little bit more of what I'm looking at here, okay? I'm going to switch these around because I want to have dx on this side. So I'm just going to say dx is going to equal v initial plus at dt, okay? I'm going to write it like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to integrate both sides here. So I'm going to take the, the integral of d of x and the integral here of dt here, this function with respect to time, okay? Uh, this, this right here, we're going to be able to separate these out, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But I'm going to take the, the boundary points here. I'm going to start from x initial, my initial position, to my final position. And I'm going to start from my initial time to my final time. Uh, again, a lot of times you will see people take this function and just make that equal to, uh, to zero. So we'll, in this case, we'll go ahead and do that just, just to kind of change it up back and forth here a little bit. But you can also leave that in and just use delta t. It's the same thing, okay? So remember, when I'm taking my inter integral here, I want to take a definite integral because I don't want to end up with constants on each side. When I have constants on each side, I'm going to have to evaluate some type of a boundary condition to eliminate the constant. So we always want to go from initial to final whenever possible. Whenever we know where we want to start and finish, that's always, that's always a good thing when we're dealing with this, okay? So I can break this, in, this uh, integral up further on the right side, so I'll just go ahead and write the one on the left again. Nothing has changed here, okay? But I'm going to break this up. Because I have a sum here, I can break this up into two different sums. So I can have 0 to t of v o dt, okay, plus the integral of 0 to t a t dt, okay? So I just kind of broke that up so you can see what's going on here. I do have some constants here. Remember we talked about constants before. What can I do to those constants? Well, when I have a constant here, this is a v initial, that can come to the outside. When I have a constant acceleration, as I do in this function, that can come to the outside. Okay, so I'm just kind of cleaning this up a little bit so you can see where we're going with this, okay? So again, I'm going to rewrite this one more time. x initial, x, dx is right here, okay? And then I'm going to have v initial here, integral from 0 to t dt, okay, plus acceleration integral 0 to t dt, okay. So hopefully this, or sorry, it's 0 to t t dt was right there, okay. So hopefully this clears it up now for you. So when I go ahead and evaluate these, it's going to be a lot cleaner now because I broke this up into a sum, okay. So when I evaluate this one right here, I'm going to get x evaluated from x initial to x final right here, right? And I'm going to get v initial times the time evaluated from 0 to t right here. And then I'm going to have acceleration, which was my constant acceleration, but I have a t to the first here, right? So I have to make it t squared. I add 1 to the exponent, divide by the exponent, and that's going to be evaluated from 0 to t, okay? So now I've basically 
uh, evaluated the antiderivative, and now I need to, I just need to plug in these final and initial values here. So I'm going to have x minus x initial is going to equal v initial t. Okay, I'm, I'm, I have minus a zero there. I guess I could put it just so you can see it. And I'm going to have plus a t squared over two. Okay, and then minus you know minus a zero there if you want to put that one in there. So just I used the zero just to keep it a little bit you know cleaner, but it, you could have left the t initial in and you would have just ended up with a delta t. Okay, but let's, let's just leave it like this for now. So I'm going to go ahead and solve now. What was I trying to solve for? I was trying to solve for my x position function here. I'm trying to get a position function as a function of time using all of these variables here. So I have x initial. I'm going to bring that. Remember, I'm bringing this over here. Okay, I'm bringing this over to this side. Plus v initial t. Plus, and then we can bring this out the one half a t squared, right? And so now I've just derived this basic kinematics equation. So that's what we were going for up here, right? So x equals x initial plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. That's just the basic, um, you, you'll probably see this. This is one of the most basic equations that you'll see. A lot of times when I'm starting from rest and I'm starting from a zero position, you'll just see this as x equals 1 half at squared, right? But it depends on the situation. I also want to show you um, one more variation that you might see here. You might also see this written uh, as I might. You might sub sometimes people subtract the xo back over. I like to do this a lot when I'm dealing with non-calculus base, and I'll get delta x. Remember, x minus xo is delta x equals v zero t plus one half a t squared. Okay, so it's just another way to write it. I think it's a little more efficient when you're dealing with uh, you know a lot of times when you're dealing with projectiles and final minus initial. Sometimes it's easier just to put in that delta x right there. Don't forget that, again, the whole point of this uh, was to create this function here as a function of time, okay? So that's the whole thing. So again, I'm going to write it over one more time here as a function of time just to clarify that point because if we don't clarify that later on down the road when we start solving these as a function of, of radius or distance, uh, it's, it's not going to be clear. So I can find the position, okay, x at any given point in time as modeled by this equation when I have a constant acceleration, okay? So that's what we're going for, and we've now successfully derived this equation. All right, so I've got more derivations coming up. Check for the future videos, and I'll talk to you soon.